Now the, the main bearing properties. First of all, load carrying capacity. Load carrying capacity is the maximum cycling load which the bearing is able to withstand without uh, failure for a long period of time. Uh, this is maybe the most important uh, uh, characteristic of bearing, of bearing materials. The second is wear resistance. It's ability of the bearing to resist wear and to retain its uh, dimensions. Compatibility or seizure resistance. This is the ability of the bearing making surface to resist physical joining between the bearing material and the shaft material. It, 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 it may cause adhesive wear, as we, as we saw in the previous uh, slide, this, if the compatibility is low. And it may cause seizure between the bearing and the crankshaft and the uh, shutdown of the engine. Then, uh, embeddability. Embeddability is the ability of the bearing material to absorb small, small foreign particles circulating in, in oil. And the last, conformability. This is the ability of the bearing material to accommodate minor misalignments and irregularities. Nothing is ideal, nothing is perfect, so uh, the, the bearing and shaft materials may be non parallel or uh, the, maybe there is some defects in, in the grinding of, of the, the journal surface. It may be not uh, straight, maybe barrel shape or hourglass shape, etc. And all these uh, misalignments, bearing should uh, accommodate. If you look at these properties, you see that the first two properties, load carrying capacity and wear resistance, uh, attribute to the uh, strength of the bearing, strength of the material. The, the, the harder, the stronger the material, the better, uh, the higher its low carrying capacity and the higher its wear resistance. Now the three last uh, properties uh, are soft properties. Uh, compatibility, it's the soft property, embeddability, the softer the material, the, the better it, it absorbs small foreign particles. And conformability is a uh, soft uh, pro property. So what, what, what we have? We, we need a material that is hard and it is soft. It's a, a paradox, yes, it's a absurd. But uh, it is possible, okay? This is uh, uh, about the materials engineering. It is possible. How it is possible? <clears throat> uh, you know that the bearing has a uh, uh, layered structure. First of all, it has a steel bag. Actually, 80% of, maybe more, 80% of uh, bearing weight is steel. <clears throat> steel is uh, needed for uh, providing uh, good uh, uh, contact with the bearing housing, press fit. This is the steel. Steel is support. It is not anti-friction material, it's not bearing material. Now, the <clears throat> over the street there are layers of different uh, bearing materials. So how to, how to provide softness and hardness at the same time? To, to, to do that, composite materials are used. Composite. For example, the, the first materials that you see here, this one, it, it has lamellar or layered structure. This layer may be hard, and this layer may be soft. So you have a combination of, of hardness and softness, of strength and, and softness. <coughs> different materials provide different functions. Different layers provide different functions. The second, the second type of, of composite material is particulate, particulate structure composite material. You can have a strong matrix and the soft particles distributed throughout this matrix. So you have a combination of soft and uh, uh, 
hard materials in, in this structure. And uh, you also can have uh, combined lamellar particular structure where you have a soft material. Now, uh, <clears throat> there are two, uh, general, two uh, families of bearing materials. Uh, bimetal, trimetal, okay? Bimetal materials have uh, only one layer over the steel, and trimetal materials have two layers over the steel. So steel is the first, and the uh, bearing material is the second. In bimet bimetal materials are mostly aluminum based. And uh, I would say that uh, most of aluminum bearing materials are, are bimetal. Uh, here you can see the uh, three examples of aluminum-based materials. This, these are the materials that we are using in, in King Engine bearings. The first one, this, it was developed as a replacement of uh, Babit. And uh, it has aluminum, aluminum base and 20% uh, of tin is added to this material. Tin serves as solid lubricant. So 20% of tin provides lubrication of, of this material in case of uh, mixed regime. Because if the regime of lubrication is hydrodynamic, engine bearing material is not important because there is no contact between the, between the uh, surface of bearing and surface of the job. But when you have a contact, when you have a, a mixed regime, lubrication is important, solid lubrication. And uh, this material contains 20% of tin. But it is too, too soft. When if, if only 20% of tin, it is too soft. To strengthen, it, to, to strengthen this material, 1% of copper is added. Copper, copper hardens this material. But it is still uh, relatively soft. So the second material is harder. You see that the hardness is greater than the, in the first material. What is the difference? The difference is with silicon. You see, the second material contains 2.5% of silicon. It also contains copper 1% and tin, less tin, but it still contains tin, but also 2.5% of silicon. Silicon has two uh, functions. First of all, it, it increases the hardness of, of the material. You can see the hardness is higher, but not only hardness. Silicon uh, functions as a, a abrasive when it, uh, it is in contact with a crankshaft made of cast nodular iron. Nodular cast iron. It is important because nodular cast iron has uh, some pores small pores where the uh, uh, carbon particles are embedded. This is this part of the structure of, of nodular cast iron. And uh, the first material, which doesn't contain silicon, is not successful with, uh, in contact with nodular cast iron shafts. So silicon it, it distributed in form of small particles in the aluminum matrix. It works like abrasive material. And the third material, you can see, this is our new development. This is a, a new development, new developed material. You see that it is very similar to, to this, to the second, but uh, the hardness of this material, twice as high as uh, the hardness of, of K788. This is because of this additive, proprietary additive. This proprietary additive allows to perform heat treatment to uh, re result of, we, of which is uh, uh, increased hardness. So this material is, uh, is not only, uh, not only anti-frictional because it, it contains steel, it, it also contains silicon for uh, abrasive uh, action with the uh, shafts, but it also contains some additive which allows to increase its hardness. And it can uh, work in the engines with high loads. Uh, 